Did you hear? There's a new WWE video game on the market and you need to play it right now because it's the most important thing to ever happen to anyone ever. Yeah? But hang on. I saw a video on the gaming channel with a very similar name. How observant of you. You see, we've had the game for a whole week now and we're actually in a position to advise you even further, if you can believe it. With that in mind, I'm Ben from What Culture, and here are 10 things you need to know about WWE 2K17. Number 10. The brand split is not represented. Given the duration of video game development cycles, it shouldn't be surprising that it wasn't included. And so, with 2K17 in production for about a year by the time they were likely notified of WWE's intentions, there wasn't really much they could have done about it. As much as everybody mocked the new belts, they're easily replicable in the editing suite and you can always assign everyone to the correct show within universe mode. As for all the default show stages, well, you're stuck there unless you fancy building them yourself. Number 9. Custom Entrance Videos Remember in WWE 13 where you could generate a custom Tron video for your CAW? And then they took it out? Yeah, that was great, wasn't it? We've been stuck with a few years of either pretending to be another wrestler or just going without a video, which is... a bit sh**. Thankfully, those little highlights that you mash buttons to skip at the end of your matches can be saved and stitched together into a proper custom entrance video, meaning I no longer have to pick between my doppelgangers of Christian and Jack Swagger. Number 8. The taunt system's been overhauled. Standing still and hammering the taunts to gain momentum was always a little stupid in previous games, but this year there's actually a tactical use for them. Taunting the crowd will ensure your momentum increases faster for a short time, and taunting your opponent causes you to deal more damage. Nice! Also, one of many weird detail tweaks this year is the ability to assign and use turnbuckle taunts. Simply taunt when you're near one and you'll either lean into it or climb it depending on what you've got assigned. Not necessary at all, but a lovely touch nonetheless. Number 7. Commentary is still terrible. It's arguable that post-brand split, commentary has improved drastically across WWE's flagship shows, but as already mentioned, there's no brand split here, and so we're stuck with the commentary equivalent of an elderly Spandau Ballet tribute band. Yes, Cole, King and JBL are reunited in WWE 2K17 to bring their unique brand of nonsensical BS to affairs, and you'll frequently hear examples of why they were split up in the first place. Tell us about Neville. Well, we're going to find out who's the better competitor, that's for sure. No gimmicks here, just some good old-fashioned one-on-one action. I suppose you could call them sh** commentators for one It's just SHOT A CLUB, MOTHERFUCKERS! What the f***, Ross? Number 6. The Rollout System one of the larger issues that faced previous games was the sheer amount of glitches and bugs, particularly when multiple men were in the ring at the same time. And thankfully this has now been addressed in a feature that's been a long time coming. Upon taking a big move, performers will now leave the ring to recharge, clearing the way for the in-ring action to continue. That's not to say there aren't glitches this year though, as there are some pretty monstrous issues. Number 5. Fight in the crowd or backstage. When the action in the ring isn't quite enough to satisfy you, you can now take it into the crowd and fight around the arena in front of the most respectful and well-behaved wrestling fans in the entire world. Also, it's been a few years, but returning in 2K17 is fighting backstage, and you can throw your hapless opponent into almost anything you could possibly desire to. In one corridor, that's all you get. Number 4. New Lighting System. The character models have always looked quite lovely, apart from the women since 2K took over production duties on the franchise a few years ago, but a welcome addition this year is a brand new lighting system, which, when combined with the right wrestler's entrance, is so close to photorealism that it actually is, if you squint a little bit. Finn Balor, for example. Sickening abs notwithstanding, that's a pretty bloody good-looking entrance right there, yeah! Number 3. Become a Paul Heyman Guy Everyone's favourite weasel-human hybrid has featured heavily in the marketing campaign for this year's release, and if you fulfil his demands by completing various challenges, you can become a Paul Heyman guy in my career mode. Beware though, aligning with Mr Heyman will turn you heel and earn a lot of enemies in the process, so you'd better get ready to do a lot of fighting in that corridor. Number 2. My career mode is pretty dull. Two years removed from the barren f 
f***ing blade incident, you'd have hoped things in my career mode would have improved, but sadly we get another dull, repetitive slog fest devoid of any story or meaningful choices. If it wasn't for the incredible fact that he's somehow in again, Jaden Jett is arguably the new Baron Blade, with his generic entrance, face and everything else. It's buggy too. I defeated the New Day in a tag match and the results screen told me I'd lost my feud to Big E because of it. Right. I also didn't improve in the tag title rankings, which is great. Number one, John Cena isn't the highest rated. You heard that right. Big Match John isn't the biggest boy in the playground this year. Although it probably should have been the case a couple of years ago, Lesnar is finally the top dog alongside Austin, with Cena slumping to joint second next to Rollins, Triple H and Undertaker. This actually marks the first time that Captain Dresses Like a Five-Year-Old hasn't been the most powerful character since Undertaker's staggering 98 rating in SmackDown vs Raw 2011. Unlucky, John. And that's our list. Obviously, it's too short to include all alterations made in 2K17, but that's why you should watch our full video review over on the What Culture Gaming channel. As usual, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and you can even follow me here on Twitter if you fancy. I'm Ben from What Culture, and thanks for watching.